I'm Randy Falk, Director of Product Development for NECA. Something we've all wanted to do here for a long time. We all kind of grew up with the Kenner uh, Alien and Predator collection, you know, in the early 90s. And uh, what we wanted to do was sort of, you know, take that into the modern age with uh, today's sculpting and detailing and articulation and paint. Um, but inspired by those designs for the first Predator figures that, you know, all of us uh, 30-somethings or... Uh, had owned originally, so it's cool. Um, it gives us a little chance to do uh, some of our own design and influence because it's certainly um, faithful to the overall look or theme that Kenner established. But we are able to inject some of our own um, design into you know how we're tackling some of the armor or gauntlets or masks or accessories or whatever we're doing to make them different. Um, and the results have been really cool. We did custom uh, illustrations for the packaging, made the packaging art look like similar to colors and fonts to the Kenner art and uh, it's really fun. Nostalgia is a, is a big selling point for a lot of what we do and that's like just a home run as far as that goes. So um, successful enough that we're, we're considering doing one line of Kenner inspired uh, Predators each year. So like maybe every four or five series there'll be another one. We've built Predator up a lot over the last three years and we've done probably at this point over 40 different Predator figures and kind of covered everyone from every movie and expanded universe with the Kenner stuff with uh, Dead End, Sandy Clara's movie, so we've gone far and I feel like Alien's the same type of audience and same universe um, and one of the things that's always been lacking in the Alien line when it was done by you know our predecessors was that they never had talent rights or they just didn't bother doing any of the actors so we want there to be an Alien or a Xenomorph type in each series but we also want to have the humans too so like we started out strong with Hicks and Hudson um, and we've got some talent rights as we've teased the Nostromo suit like there definitely is going to be a Dallas next year um, There's definitely going to be a Bishop next year um, There's definitely going to be some more humans from the franchise um, It is the 35th anniversary of the original film next year, which is a big milestone um, And we are going to have 35th anniversary figures throughout the year so while the series won't be dedicated just to Alien in each series, starting with series, really starting with series two, but series two, three, and four will all have 35th anniversary figures with the 35th anniversary logo sprinkled throughout. But you might find an assortment that say has Bishop, Dallas, and the dog Alien, for example, maybe all in one series. So you have something from Alien, something from Aliens, and something from Alien 3. Um, but we're, we're having a blast with it because it's stuff no one's ever done. It's from like the heyday. Like they don't make movies like that anymore, you know. Um, doing stuff like Jonesy the Cat, even in there as an accessory. The flamethrower, which you saw, the Nostromo suit is fantastic. And it's another one that's good for us because several crew members in the movie wear that suit. So it allows us to maybe get two or three other characters out there using that same suit and just changing the heads and some of the decoration and some of the armor pads are a little bit different depending on which character it is, but uh, that's always great for us where we can amortize our tooling and our sculpting and uh, still be faithful to the movie but give you, say, two or three Nostromo crew members rather than just one. We definitely want to do more Jasons. Um, we've done just about every Freddy at this point. We've gone all the way up to, like, you know, Freddy's Dead and Power Glove this fall, and uh, uh, we kind of went chronologically and gone all the way up. I have something on the drawing board for next year for the 30th anniversary of Elm Street. Um, We'll see if it happens. I'm, I'm hoping it does. It depends on time and budget and a lot of other factors here, but I have uh, a few things planned, so I'm hoping that we get to those. And then Jason um, is a bit more of a challenge with Freddy since it's always the same actor and his look changes, but not drastically. We're able to reuse or recycle a lot of the main body and then we're changing like the makeup for the head, the neck, the glove, the hat, all the things that kind of change in each film, but more or less keeping the same basic torso and legs, it saves us a lot of tooling and a lot of expense and lets us do all the different variations. Jason is almost always a different actor until Kane Hodder shows up and even when Kane played him, the look of Jason changes dramatically from every film. So for us it's it's more uh, cost prohibitive because we have to sculpt all new figures and tool all new figures each time and we're only getting like one use out of it. And it's, it's tougher, but we definitely have a lot more we want to do with it. It sells well. We did put together the sort of Mego-inspired Freddy and Jason, which will hit for this Halloween as well, which was something um, a little different that we've always wanted to do. There's two or three of us here who are a little bit older. We're like the senior citizens amongst the crew here, and uh, 
you know, those were our first action figures before three and three quarter Star Wars and three and three quarter Joe. I had Mego superheroes, Mego monsters, um, all my TV shows. I had Migos with Dukes of Hazard and Chips and all that kind of stuff. So I always felt like that stuff from the late '70s and early '80s fit that style and hadn't been done that way. So Freddie and Jason falls into that. I'd love to do a Michael Myers like that. Um, we're looking at some of the other licenses we have uh, that kind of fit into that niche. Evil Dead maybe, uh, maybe Rocky, um, to get some more of that Mego format out there. The Freddie and Jason have been well received. The orders exceeded our expectations. Um, we'll see what the sell through is like when they hit the shelf, but they're nice. The packaging is beautiful. Um, we did custom illustration, uh, really unique card art that's faithful to that sort of 70s packaging aesthetic that Mego had. Um, I remember as a kid, like the Mego Frankenstein and Dracula and stuff, they're a little bit goofy, but the paintings on the cards are so beautiful. As a kid, I even like saved the card and had it like taped to my wall in my bedroom, you know. So we try to follow that same format with Freddie and Jason. I think we'll uh, we'll expand upon that next year too. And I would love to do more music figures. I'm pretty big, you know, hard rock and metal guy especially. So I mean, I love doing Iron Maiden. I would love to do some of the sort of metal greats like Dio and Lemmy. And uh, um, it's just tough. The audience is, is tough because it's not the same like as the regular toy buyer. Maiden works a little bit better because it's more about Eddie, the mascot, and he sort of looks like a zombie or a skeleton. So people just buy it because they think it looks cool. It's a little tougher. Um, you know, selling figures of the personalities.